Hey guys, it's Krista here, and today we're going to be doing this problem called Critical Connections in a Network. And this problem is asked by Amazon apparently a lot. Basically, what it's asking you to do is it's saying if you're given a graph, find the node in the graph that if you remove that node, it would disconnect the graph into two or more pieces. So, for example, in this diagram they gave us, if you removed one, you would have a disconnected graph of two or more components, specifically two for this example, because if you removed one, you would have this com component here of just three, and then you would have this connected component over here of two and zero, but they wouldn't be connected anymore, like all together. So there's a way to do this. It's called Tarjan's algorithm, and Tarjan's algorithm is basically a modified version of depth first search where you do a depth first search, but then you keep track um, of two attributes per node and one of those attributes is called um, I ca I'm going to call it visited time but sometimes people call it depth first number or sometimes people call it um, uh, discovery time really all it is is it's just a way to keep track of the order of the nodes that you traverse so like if I started at zero here my discovery time or my visited time for zero would be zero and then let's say I went to two so this the visited time of two would be one and then let's say I went to one then the visited time of one would be two and let's say I went to three then the visited time of three would be three so it's just keeping um, like track of the sequence of uh, nodes you visited um, and then there's another attribute, like I said, called low time, but I'm not going to discuss that quite yet because I think it makes more sense when you actually um, write the algorithm. So what we're given in this problem is we're given a list of lists of integers which represents the connections of each node. So for example, we have 0, 1, it represents uh, a connection from 0 to 1 and then so on and so on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna transform this list of lists of integers to an adjacency list, and we're gonna do that by creating an array of um, array lists. So we're just gonna say uh, graph, actually graph, okay. Then we're going to need this same sort of data structure to return, because that's our return type, and we'll call it critical connections. And then we're going to have an array of, um, an integer array of visited times, an integer array of low times, which sounds so depressing, and then we're going to have an, like an int time, okay? so. Here we're going to uh, instantiate these, so we'll say graph is equal to new array list. So it's an array of array lists, and then critical connections equals new array list. And then, actually, we're going to need n for that. And then uh, visited times equals a new integer array of size n. The same thing goes for low times, so I'll just say call this low times, and then the time will start at zero, and now we need to build in adjacency, adjacency, I don't know how to spell, build in adjacency list for our graph. Um, so we'll create a new function called build graph and we'll just pass it in the connections. So let's write this function down here. So like I said, our, can, our um, graph is a array of array lists. So the first thing we have to do is we have to iterate through every index in that array and just um, create a array list at that index. So we'll just say graph of i is equal to new array list. And then what we need to do is, so what it's going to look like is it's going to look like something like this, where we have an array, and then inside, obviously we're gonna have array lists like I said. So for our example that they gave us, there's four nodes. So we'll have four array lists. The index is going to represent the node. So 
index zero represents node zero, and inside here we're gonna put the connections that node zero has. So in, uh, node zero has connections to nodes one and two, and then in uh, node one has connections to three, two, and uh, no, yeah, three, two, and zero. And then node two has connections to node one and zero, and then node three just has a connection to one. So it's gonna look like this. We're gonna create. We're gonna pull this off by uh, having a list of inter. Um, we're going. To what is this again? Oh yeah, it's a list of inter. So for each connection in connections, we're going to grab the uh, value at index zero. So and we're gonna store it in, in like some variable. I'll call it a. So it's gonna say. We're gonna say connection.get, and then we'll do the same thing for the value at index one. So, and then because our graph is a an array of array lists, we can do this, and then we can do the same thing for B. Okay, so that will take care of building the um, adjacency list. And all, we are seriously almost done. We just need to do the DFS. And so obviously for DFS, we need to pass in, um, like a, we need to have some way to keep track of the nodes we visited. So I'm gonna use a Boolean array of size N, and then I'm just gonna pass that into DFS. Luckily for us, our nodes, um, like in this problem, are just integers. We don't have a special node class, so we can start with any um, node, and we're just going to pass in a number. So I'm going to start with zero, and the parent. We're going to need the parent. We we need to keep track of the parent node for this problem. So this here is going to be the current node. Let's actually let me just write the definition of DFS and then we'll come back and fill that out later. So um, it's going to take a boolean array visited. It's going to take a, the current node and then the parent node. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check that we're gonna mark the current node as visited and then we're going to increment our two attributes I was talking about. So visited time, let me see if I Visited times current current modes visited time is and these two attributes um, increment together as you go along. So current time the low times of the current node. Okay. And now we're just gonna explore the current node's neighbors as we always do in depth first search. So we're going to say for in neighbor in graph dot current node. Okay, so if the neighbor is equal to the parent, we don't want to do anything. We're going to just continue through that. We don't want to. We're going to skip over that iteration. There's nothing for us to process there. So if the neighbor, so if the neighbor is hasn't been visited yet, we want to do another DFS. Um, we need to keep track of this because uh, obviously we don't want to keep calling DFS on nodes that have already been visited because then we'll have a stack overflow. So we'll just say, um, so visited, we're going to pass visited. So now the neighbor is going to become the current node and the current node is going to become the parent node. Okay, so let's just go back to this diagram and see like how this code's working. So let's say we started at zero. Um, so the we, we pass zero in here. The parent node of zero is negative one. That's how we're gonna mark um, like our parent node as null, and then we're gonna mark it as visited, and then we're gonna uh, this is a post increment. So uh, visited time and low time will still be zero zero. Then we're gonna explore zero's neighbors, which are just one and two, and then let's just say we got two as a neighbor. So now. 2 hasn't been visited yet, so we call DFS. Now we're at 2. We're going to do the same thing for 2. Uh, the visited time and the load time of 2 is going to be 
uh, one and one, and then we're gonna explore two's neighbors. So let's say the first neighbor that pops up in this iteration, like in this uh, list that we're iterating over is zero. Well, zero is the parent node, so we're gonna skip over that. Then we're gonna go, the next neighbor that pops up is one. One is in the parent node and one hasn't been visited before, so we're at one now. We're going to increment one's visited time and load time. Um, so now they're both equal to two. And then we're gonna explore one's neighbors. Let's say two pops up for one as its first neighbor. Two is, in, two is the parent, so we skip over that. Then zero pops up and now zero has been visited. So this statement is going to be false. So we're gonna need a new condition here. But before we, we write anything, we gotta think about what this means. If we have a neighbor that's already been visited and it's not the parent, that means that we have found a back edge. And a back edge basically means there's an alternative way to get to where we are besides going through our parent. So our parent can't be an articulation point or it can't be a critical point because if we removed our parent, we would still have a way to get to where we are. So in the example of one, two was our parent. One, the current node is one. The parent node is two. We were exploring one's neighbors, so we found zero. Zero was already visited because that was the node we started at. And so we found a back edge. So if we remove two, we would be fine because there would still be a way to get to one. And from one, we would still have a way to get to all of one's neighbors. So the graph wouldn't become disconnected. So we need to uh, do something with this information. And this information being that we found the back edge in this else block. So what we're going to do, it was we're going to update the low time of the current node to be equal to the min of either the low time of the current node or um, the visited time of the neighbor. And this will become clear as to why in a second, but basically, so the low time of our current node one will go from two to zero because we're gonna say, hey, take the min of the low time of the current node, which is two, versus the visited time of the neighbor, which is zero, and make that the current node's load time. So one's load time is now going to be zero. And we'll see why we did that in a second. But let's just leave that as is for now and continue on. So let's say, um, so we're, we're back at one, the current node is one, and now we're, we're exploring our last neighbor node of one, which is three. So we go to three, and we increment three's visited time and low time by one. So the three's visited time is three and the low time of three is also three. And now we're gonna visit three's neighbors, which it only has one, it has node one, but node one is the parent, so we continue. And now three doesn't have any more neighbors, so we close out that recursion. And now we're back at the current node being one. And the current node being one, um, we've already explored all of one's neighbors. So we ha and, and by looking at this graph, we know that one is an articulation point. So we have to do something here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to say um, if the current node's load time, no, if the current node's, let me think of this, if the visited time of the current node is less than the load time of the neighbor we were exploring, then that means it's an articulation point. So we're going to add it to our critical connections. I think that's what I called it. Add um, arrays as lists because um, we're actually not returning just the node for this problem. We're returning the connection. So it's going to be one and three. So um, it's going to be current node neighbor. But let's think about why this is true. So if three had a back edge to two or one, that would mean that one wouldn't be an articulation point, but that would also mean, let's just say it had, let's just say three had a back edge to two. That would mean that um, when we got to three and we were exploring three's neighbors, we would come across 
two. And um, we would hit this line. And this line would update three's um, low time to be equal to the visited time of the neighbor. So the reason, first of all, the reason we would hit this line is because two, if, if three had a back edge to two, then two would have, ha would have already been visited. So we would jump down to here and we would update three's low time to be the visited time of two, which will automatically be lower than the um, visited time. Like it will be lower than, now three's low time will be smaller than the visited time of one because we're circumventing one. Two came before one in our traversal. So then, but that's not the case. And that's why this make like this line is guaranteed. We can be sure that if this condition is true, then we have found an articulation point because obviously three doesn't have a back edge. So one's visited time is always going to be less than its low time because its low time is never going to be updated to anything smaller than one's visited time because it has no back edge. And if it has no back edge, that means its parent node being one. If that's removed, it will disconnect the graph. And so there's actually just one other thing we have to do. We have to um, back, basically we have to back propagate the low times for like a cycle that we find. So if the low time current of the current node is going to be equal to the min of the low time of the current node, or the low time of its neighbor. So, for example, let's say we started at we're starting at the beginning again, zero, um, node zero, and so the visited time of node zero is zero. The low time of low node zero is also zero, and then we go to two, and its visited time becomes one, and its low time becomes one, and then we go to one, and its visited time becomes two, and its low time becomes two, and then we find then we from one we discover zero again and we realize it's a back edge so we update low um, one's low time to be zero but we also want to back, back propagate that low time to all the nodes in this cycle so that's why we need this line here so that this whole thing should take care of tarjan's algorithm all we have to do here is update this so we're gonna like i said i'm gonna start with a node zero and then use negative one to signify that whatever node I'm starting at has no parent. And all we have to do is return our critical connections. And let's um, just run this. Oh, I always make a mistake. Line 23. Private invalid decoration, declaration. Private void, whoops. Line 41. Oh. It's really hard to talk and type these things out. Okay, it's parent node. <laughs> I always spell things wrong, too. I think it's because I'm talking and I'm just saying parent instead of parent node. Line 31, okay, current node, low time, current node equals low time. Cannot find, oh, low times. Did I do this for everything? Oh God, low times, low times, low times. I think I did this for all of, I think I spelled everything wrong. <laughs> um, low times, okay. I'm sure when I hit run, oh, I will find something else, yep. Line 31, low times, okay. And yeah, so it works. Let me just submit it to make sure it works for everything, all their test cases. As you can see, I've done this problem many times. And yeah, that's it guys. So let me know if there's other problems you want me to do. I'm taking suggestions and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.